Hi friends, it's me Carrie and Yeah, Bella. And we are here for bedtime Bible stories. Now today's story is one of the most important stories in the whole entire Bible. In fact, I think it is the most important story of the whole Bible because it talks about somebody who saved us from our sin. And that's Jesus Christ. So unfortunately, our story starts out a little sad, just like our last time story. And it's called The Death of Jesus. And I'm using, again, the Complete Illustrated Bible, so if you want to follow along. And then afterwards, I want to make a craft with you that you can keep at home and use at home. All right, actually, you know what? Let's start with the craft. Let's start there. Here is our craft today, and it's, <clears throat> said, it's a cross that says, He Lives. And we're making this out of... What? Toilet paper rolls! Uh, we decorate so it does not look like toilet paper rolls. Alright, so what you're going to need is a toilet paper roll. And then if you are old enough to use scissors and get permission from your parents, then you can use scissors on your own. But if not, I suggest you get an adult to help you cut. Can I and cut? What you're gonna do, I know how to cut. Yeah, I'm not going to have you cut because these are very big, heavy-duty scissors. But I'm going to let you collect those rings. Uh, so you're going to cut these. And I'll look so you can see how close it is. Rings with the toilet paper. Can we decorate it so it doesn't look You can like paint that? it later. Right now we're not going to do that. We don't have time for that. But you're going to take your toilet paper roll and you're going to cut it. And you know what? If you want to make your cross bigger than this one, that's perfectly fine with me. Use as many toilet paper rolls as you want. But we're going to use one toilet paper roll per person. And another thing that you're going to need is a stapler or some tape. <clears throat> And what you're going to do is you're going to take your pieces, your circles, and you're going to, I would say, if you had a hot glue gun, you can try that too, again, with an adult help. But you can take some tape, and you're going to tape these pieces together. Now, if you have an adult present, you can staple them, but you're going to need their help for that. Can I staple? Um, no, because I don't want you to staple your fingers, and it's kind of tricky. But what you're going to do is you're going to staple them together until you get you took a cross. These, this is for you. Yeah. And remember, I said at the end, if you want to color, paint yours, you can paint yours. Ah. Okay, the stapler's not working. That's all right. We're just going to use tape. Um, the last one I made was with the stapler, but with the tape is just fine, too. You just want to make sure that you wrap all the way around so that the whole thing will get it. Otherwise, it'll fall apart. And you want to put four together, top to bottom, like this. No, that's not making a cross, you silly goose. I know. I don't really want to make something. And you're going to hear the story and why we're using the cross later. But you're going to make your wonderful cross crafts. Then, after you have four together like this... Then you're going to need another one, and you're going to tape it to the side like this so that you can see. I'm getting real close. Just like that. Then you're going to take another one and put it on the other side. Just like this. And you're going to make it go all the way around so that it doesn't fall apart. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. So that you have a cross. And then the next part you want to add to yours is the most important part. Because this cross, as you notice, there's nobody on the cross right now. Because, spoiler alert, Jesus is not on the cross anymore. And so then you're going to take a piece of paper... You can just take a piece of paper, a purple, blue piece of paper. I chose purple, but you can use whatever color you want. If you want to use red, green, whatever you want. But I chose the color royalty, which is purple, because Jesus is our king, right? And so you can write, he lives on it. Or you can put, my redeemer lives, whichever one you want. Annabella, which one do you want your cross to say? He lives or my redeemer lives? He lives. He lives. All right. And then you're going to tape your sign, he lives, onto your cross. Because guess what? He lives. Right? He is not in the grave anymore. And we're going to hear that in our story next. So you're going to make your cross so that it says, he lives. There we go. 
he lives. And then you can take some yarn and then put some on the top and then you can hang it up. You can hang it up in your window. Give some people a little bit of hope in this crazy time right now. All right, so I'm going to read the story, The Death of Jesus. All right, at midday, a shadow passed across the sun and the darkness fell over the land for three long hours. At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a voice, My God, why have you forsaken me? And then he gave a great cry. It is finished. And with these words, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the earth shook like an earthquake. Ah, earthquake! And the curtain in the holy temple was torn from the top to bottom. When the Roman soldiers felt the ground move beneath their feet and saw how Jesus passed away, they were deeply shaken. Surely he was the son of God, he whispered in amazement. All right, and then we're going to keep going. And this is a pretty special part, the burial. In Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 19. Because the next day was to be the special Sabbath, Jewish leaders did not want the bodies to be left on the crosses, and they asked Pilate to have them taken down. A man named Joseph of Ar Arimathea asked permission to take Jesus' body away. Jesus' friends carefully wrapped the body in linen and spices and placed it in the tomb that Joseph had built for himself. Then they rolled a large stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and they sadly left because their friend had died. But the very next day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate and asked him to place a guard in front of the tomb and to seal it. For they remembered that when he was, Jesus was alive, he had said, after three days, I will rise again. They believed that his disciples might come and steal the body and then try to persuade the people that he had been raised from the dead. And Pilate told them to make the tomb secure, and they did. So they thought what Jesus said was a lie. They thought that the disciples were going to steal his body and not that he was going to rise again. So they put special guards there. But let's see what happens. The empty tomb, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. John 20. Early on the first day of the week, before the sun had fully risen, Mary Magdalene and some other women went to anoint Jesus' body. When they came near the tomb, the earth shook. Oh, it shook again. Ah! And as they came, the earth shook, and the guards were thrown to the ground, and the women saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, and inside the tomb, shining brighter than the sun, was an angel. The terrified woman fell to their knees, but the angel said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Don't you remember that he told you that this would happen? Look and see. Then go and tell his disciples that he will meet them in Galilee. In, I'm sorry, in Galilee. And pro as, as he promised. So the women hurried away to tell the disciples the news, afraid yet filled with joy. <gasps> Jesus is not there. He wasn't lying. He did rise again. Alive in Matthew 28, Mark 16, and John 20. John 20. Mary Magdalene stood outside the tomb. Peter and one of the other disciples had come. They had seen the strips of linen and then had left in wonder and confusion. Now she was alone. She missed Jesus so much. Just then she heard the steps behind her and a man asked, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking this must be a gardener, she begged, Sir, if you have moved him, please tell me where he is and when, and I will get him. The man only spoke her name, Mary. But instantly she spun around, and she recognized that clear, gentle voice. Teacher, she gasped, and she reached out, reached out towards Jesus. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go and tell the others. And so Mary rushed off with an amazing news that she had seen Jesus alive. That's right, guys. He is not dead. He is alive. And we can hear stories later about the other people that Jesus appeared to. But the most important part of our story is that Jesus is not dead, guys. He's alive. Our Redeemer lives. And so we're going to sing the song, My Redeemer Lives. But before we do, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this gift that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for enduring such a terrible death and dying on the cross, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. And I thank you, Lord, 
that you have died on the cross for our sins and you've forgiven us for all the sins that we've done. And I thank you, Lord, for rising again, for bringing us hope and faith, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that you would bring it strong to us in this time, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing the song, My Redeemer Lives, because guess what? He's alive! Are you ready, Annabella? I need your help. You can, it's okay to be excited. Rescue my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. Ashes is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe. You take the blood. I believe. I don't hear you. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. I know He rescued me. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is. My Redeemer is.